indulgence, if that makes any sense. And, you know, in today's society, I feel like the fact that lots of people probably have never heard the word in their life says a lot about what we value in our culture. And that's what we're go going to be talking about today. Cool. Very cool. You know, I've spent so much of my life obsessing over wanting, getting, and taking. I rarely ever thought to limit myself until not too long ago. Even last year, I threw away a huge amount of clothing just because I wasn't wearing it regularly. Um, there are many signs of this kind of behavior out there. Signs that are clear in you or others when you look for them. Uh, for example, later on we're going to be talking about how the lack of temperance in our society affects things like the obesity epidemic. But what does this problem stem from? I believe it comes from a lack of restraint. And this reveals something scary about our culture and the way we treat ourselves and our world. I see, but I still don't quite understand. What does this have to do with me? Let me break it down further. Our society completely avoids the need for temperance. From a young age, we learn to take as much as we can, and why shouldn't we? One can't live simply in this society. One might say that capitalism is in direct opposition with temperance, so it's no wonder not many of us Americans hold it in high esteem. But it goes beyond that. Recently, I discovered something terrible in my research. Last year, Americans disposed of 13.7 million pounds of textiles. This may seem like a minor issue on the surface, but considering that most clothes in the average person's closet are made out of synthetic material, and that that material releases methane into the air when decomposing, it is suddenly clear that this is no simple issue, but a problem within our society. For years, America has raised its children to be consumers, and we have consumed so much because we were never taught to limit ourselves. But who would have taught us that? My parents weren't taught that. That's a really good point. And, you know, my parents are Generation X, and they share similar sentiments. And I think that this problem really began at the end of World War II. You see, I believe that with the end of the war and the memory of the Great Depression sort of fading, the older generations were determined to make sure their descendants wouldn't have to live in squalor or fear like they did. The sentiment was well-meaning, but they couldn't have known what it would lead to. When you picture the 50s, you might see the ideal middle-class family with a wide backyard, new shiny appliances, and never having to lack anything ever again. I think our problems today come from the lack of foresight on the part of those adults during that time. Specifically, I think the silent generation and the baby boomers are the most responsible for this toxic cultural shift, though they didn't know how bad it would get. And now after being taught by our elders, the successors of these successful generations are suffering from and at the same time perpetuating these issues. But obviously some people have caught on. The newer generations are very self-aware, and there are so many causes to join out there. Perhaps, but I still believe that the majority of these people are looking for ways to sustain their own lifestyle under the guise of protecting the planet. You know, people are used to the way they live, and it's hard to get unstuck from that. There are many wonderful programs to help bring the Earth to its former glory. I mean, you've heard of Team Trees, and it is wonderful to see the young creators of the new millennium taking an active part in saving the planet. But I think the issue needs more than just planting trees. We need a cultural shift, because on our own, we would just revert back to our old habits. But these issues would take so long to fix. Shouldn't we focus on another virtue instead? Something like silence? Shouldn't we be more worried about our society collapsing because of ignorance and hate? I can fully understand why so many find this the top priority. But I say, will this even matter if the world is falling apart around us? I think the issues of discrimination and systematic oppression are very important, but must take a back seat to environmental issues. There will always be terrible, hateful people, but there won't always be oil or natural resources or even breathable air. Not at the rate we're going. I would even reason that focusing on the virtue of temperance would improve the lot that are passionately cruel and serve to wipe them out for good. Temperance not only means limiting one's consumption, but also one's negativity towards others, and the limiting of giving in to hate and anger. So, in what way do I and others around me not show temperance? The smaller scale issue with the ignorance of temperance is the obesity epidemic. And I'll get to why this is the smaller issue later. 
But across the nation, there are many obese adults and children who seem unwilling or unable to break their bad habits. Usually these problems start in childhood because our parents tell us to do what we want, as their parents did, or adults neglect their children, even if it's in ways that aren't so obvious. When a parent says, they'll just do it anyway, why stop them? This is a sign of neglect, truly. But millennials were raised this way, Generation X was raised this way, because our culture is about getting what we want when we want it, and that's really dangerous. No one cares to limit themselves anymore, like our long past ancestors did. No one accepts the discomforts of being a little hungry between meals or things taking a long time because we've been taught to be impatient, to not temper our urges. Everyone is guilty of this, especially us who are well off in the world. Can you give me another example of how ignoring temperance hurts our society? As I mentioned before, Americans are very wasteful. Once something breaks, we get rid of it. Once I saw a little text post from a Facebook page that said, My grandma used to say, if something breaks, you fix it. You don't just throw it away. And while this was about divorce, a different topic that stems from similar issues, I feel that this applies to the general mindset we have been given by our parents, and by their parents before them. When we're dissatisfied with something, we get rid of it, instead of repurposing it or giving it to someone we know needs it. Or we trick ourselves into feeling good by donating it to a goodwill, or the like. When the majority of our clothes sent to those organizations eventually go on to landfills overseas. Everywhere you look in your life or the lives of your loved ones, everyone is throwing things away for no good reason. And it's cultural habits like this that need to be broken. So as we wrap up our episode today, I just want to say, if you're looking at your life right now, realizing how much impact you and your loved ones have and feeling guilty, that's not a bad thing. We need people to feel bad about the way we run our society. When people are motivated to put a stop to harmful ways, we can really make an impact. If you want to change this world for the better, start small. If you are thinking of throwing something away, find a new use for it, or ask around to see if anyone wants it. If you often buy things wrapped in plastic, or binge on snacks, ask yourself what the purpose of these things are, and if they are really worth it today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. The cultural shift we desperately need starts with the individual. It must spread from person to person. So don't be a bystander in your own life. If you or someone you know is partaking in what you know to be wrong, stop and educate them. Measure yourself. Once you have that down, then you'll start to see the difference you make with just a bit of temperance. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you on. Uh, thanks for having me. I feel like I really learned a lot today. Well, I'm glad. Make sure you tune in next week when we talk about the new Joker movie, um, the media's reaction to it, and the OK Boomer trend. This has been Emma Marino with History Speaks. Remember, the examples of yesterday help the issues of today. Have a good one. Thank you.